Now that we know what has to happen before Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine can be made available to younger kids, 5 to 11 years old, many of you have questions about how it works, potential side effects, and how it's different from the adult vaccine. Dr. Mobian Rathor is the chief of pediatric infectious disease at UF Health and Wolfson Children's Hospital. He's joining us via Zoom this morning. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. So what can you tell us about this vaccine? I mean, would it still, for example, require two shots spread out over several weeks? Yes, I think the vaccine that uh, we're talking about, the Pfizer vaccine, which uh, there was a press release from the company that the vaccine seems to be safe and effective, it is going to require two shots, just like the ones that all of the adults get. Uh, the only thing is going to be it's going to be a smaller dose than what the adults get. So it's pretty much the same. That said, because this is a, a misconception that we have heard for about a year now when it comes to the adult vaccine, when it when we're talking about the child vaccine and this one in particular, Pfizer, Pfizer does it change a person's DNA in any way? Absolutely not. Uh, uh, you know, Jen, the thing is that this vaccine is like an application on your USB drive. When you put it in your laptop, you run the application and you remove the USB, the application is gone. So once the messenger RNA, it's not even a DNA, gets into your body, uh, takes over the production of the protein against that would then cause the body to produce the protective antibodies, it's gone. It's not even there anymore. So I think that is not true at all that in any way, impacts or changes or affects your DNA. It doesn't even get into the nucleus where the DNA is. What about side effects? Because something else we certainly have heard among parents in particular uh, is this misconception about the fact that it can somehow um, impact fertility in children. It does not affect fertility in anyone. I think there's no evidence at all it does that. The, what you should expect is what we expect from most uh, vaccines is in the first 24 to 72 hours, you're going to get some local reactions. You may get a low grade fever, your arm may hurt, you may feel like you're coming down with something and then that's, it is fine after that. And also remember that most uh, complications or side effects of any vaccine occur in first six to eight weeks. And we know now from over a billion vaccines given that these vaccines are very safe. They, and they are much more safer by any uh, uh, measure uh, compared to what the, the actual infection does. So, you know, we need to be very clear in all our minds that this is the vaccine is the one that protects you. And this is the one that's going to not just this vaccine, but the vaccines in general are going to get us out of this pandemic. And there's certainly been a sprint to develop vaccines that are safe among younger children. I know that you're conducting a clinical trial with the Moderna vaccine, specifically in children six months to 12 years old. How is that going? That's going very well. That's the other vaccine we hope would be available soon. Uh, and I can tell you that the demand of the parents, you know, parents are smart. They know that they have to protect their children. We have uh, enrolled several children, uh, but we have more than 500 children on a waiting list wanting to get onto the vaccine trial. And we hope to get them on this vaccine trial and another vaccine trial that we're going to do start soon. So I think we need to get children protected by getting more vaccines, more safe vaccines vaccines and more effective vaccines. So it's interesting, you know, we, we learned over the weekend that the adult Pfizer vaccine is not quite as effective, 88% compared to Moderna at 93% at preventing hospitalizations. Should parents wait to get their kids vaccinated in this age group for, for one over another vaccine? You know, uh, Jen, we as uh, uh, investigators and scientists and physicians like to look at those numbers, but 88% is pretty darn good. You know, if I was told that I've got an 88% chance of winning on a stock in the stock market, not only me, but all of us would be putting money in there. So 88% is pretty good. Now, 93% is better. So you should get the vaccine that's available to you without missing the opportunity to, uh, to try and delaying the uh, taking of the vaccine because you want to protect your children and everybody else as soon as possible. Dr. Rathor, we look forward to having more conversations with you about the clinical trial that you're currently conducting with Moderna among children. So thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jen.